Fraser. Sorry? How are you doing, Fraser? All right, how's yourself? Not too bad, thank, thank you. Kitty. Um, do you want to start us off with the injury situation, please, Sam? Uh, actually, pretty good, I think. Best since I've been here. I think that um, uh, Mr. Stecklenberg's uh, nearly joining in training um, back again. Um, Leighton's not on the field yet in training, but he's in the full mode for recovery. He's running, and we would expect by the time we play Watford, he'll he'll certainly be clear of the injuries that he's had. Um, we'll keep everybody else fit. So from that point of view, injuries have been or are pretty good. Um, especially when I arrived on how many injuries there were, of course, and uh, um, and some were long-term injuries that we seem to have recovered from and hopefully keep them fit. Unfortunately, James is recovering from his broken leg. But um, it's nice to say that there's less than a handful of players injured at the moment. Um, you were pretty scathing after the Arsenal defeat. Um, what sort of a reaction have you you've seen from the players in training this week? Uh, like you would expect, I think that the lads have accepted that we've all accepted that we were we were not um, able to compete with Arsenal. But I think in reality, uh, at the end of the day, um, an Arsenal team as good as that punishes a lot of teams and punishes a lot of teams um, this season on their own soil, and uh, and we found that difficult to cope. Um, certainly in the first 30, 35 minutes. I have to say there was a spirited recovery that would be forgotten about when you see 5-1, but there was a spirited recovery in the second half um, by the players. Um, but yes, it was a, it was one that we have to react to in the right way. And um, our overall away results have to improve. We know that. Um, and it's not just since I've arrived. It's it was it was there for all to see before I came here. At least we did manage to get a win at Newcastle um, and a, and a draw at West Brom. But we want more than that if we can. Um, probably a debut that wasn't the, the most memorable for Elia Kim Mangala. Um, was it maybe some of those mitigating circumstances that you mentioned about how good Arsenal were, or? Was it too much to expect him to make too big a, a positive impact? Well, you can only make an impact if the rest of the players are playing to their abilities and their capabilities, and we weren't as a team, especially the first 30 minutes. But as I say, there was nothing wrong with his performance in the second half, like all, all the players, because it actually took the game to Arsenal and created more chances in the second half. And like I said, that only I would know that because I it's my job to study that, to study the whole game. Um, obviously, your job is to write about the fact that we've beat, been beaten 5-1 five, five which is a very poor result indeed to to accept um, but the, the the old performance was, wasn't was really what we were looking for but certainly there was a reaction to the second half performance which shows like I said um, in the press conference after it's one of those blips that we've got to get over and get over it quick the team have managed to do that because they, as Brian told me and I said at the time We've created more opportunities by gaining points from from behind than most teams in the Premier League. So we don't always fall foul to a heavy defeat. We actually lose a goal and actually come back and get a result quite well and as good as any team in the Premier League. So we've not really to forget that on one isolated incident at that particular time. So is it a question now of you being able to focus on some of those positives, particularly from that second half to try and... Make well, it's focusing on our own form. I'm a three-two-one. Uh, did you used to watch that? Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah, we've won three, drawn two, and only lost one since I've been here. So that's out of six games. So yeah. our own form is very good. Our own form is our 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 best way of staying in the top half if we can, and first of all, avoiding uh, avoiding the threat of relegation. But our own form has to be continued, starting with Crystal Palace on Saturday again as it was against Leicester on, on the Wednesday. So when you're when you're looking at us in the, in the light of, yes, away results are not so good, but our own form is is pretty good at this moment in time. And there's only Manchester United beat us at Goodison in the last six games, which is a, which is a positive for us to look at and say, as like Arsenal, they go to Swansea and lose, lose comf comfortably, come back and play really, really well and uh, beat us comfortably. We want to hopefully repeat that, if we can, on on Saturday against my old club, Crystal Palace. And they've been in great form, haven't they? Two defeats in ten 
so uh, they're not going to make it easy for you either. No, they won't. And it's a great turnaround from Roy and the lads. But you know, it was always in the players, and Roy's managed to bring it out of them. You know, because it was it's more or less um, uh, the same players I think than that I had. I think there's only um, Fossa Mensa that's playing in the team at the moment that wasn't there when I was there. I think everybody else was, but they've got some good, really good strengths in the side, um, which we obviously me and Sammy. Uh, Ryle and Dan uh, Martin all know about uh, but really at Goodison it's about us really it's about us playing to our best it's about us playing like we did against Leicester and, uh, and trying to win the game yes we have to be concerned here and there about about Crystal Palace's strengths particularly the uh, the front uh, the front three but I think that Wolf may have a problem so might not be playing so that may be an advantage to us but like I said if you want to take an advantage you have to play your best and have to play your best game in every game you're playing in the Premier League to get a result and we'll certainly have to play our best game against Crystal Palace because they've been very good and very resilient from a very difficult position so you know that's off to the players and Roy for how they've how, they, how he's mastered and, and battled their way through that. The game sees the 30th anniversary of Everton in the community which is a, a great landmark isn't it something that you're obviously very very proud of. Um, well I've only had a small um, time with the with the community of course and uh, and of course um can't speak highly enough about the 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 community as a whole across every football club because uh, they all they all do a fantastic job but none more so than Everton for me I've never seen anybody that does as much for the community as Everton Everton football club does and uh, and I think they've got freedom of the city and and rightly so I mean they give so much um comfort to so many people um, it, it really is a really is a great great effort by by the football club, and I think that we're all s celebrating that effort this week on uh, on after the game on Tuesday. So uh, um, we will all be there. We'll all be there supporting the the community, and uh, hope it continues to grow and continues to be a major success. Um, John Moss is going to be the referee in charge. Um, had a bit of a nightmare last weekend at uh, Anfield. I don't know how much you saw of that. Uh, any concern about that, or are you got a bit of sympathy for him? Um, I think he, cho he chose to do the right thing and, and talk it out. So, and then come to the decision. Whether that decision was right or wrong, only him and his bosses have to discuss that and can comp con you know come to the conclusion on where, where and when. But I think that the only thing that. Um, they didn't do were cover the mouth up like everybody says you've got to these days because the camera goes so close and listening to what they're saying but I thought they decided to talk it out with, a, with the assistant referee Just the last couple um, according to uh, reports uh, David Unsworth turned down the Oxford job I don't know whether you're aware of, of that at all is, is he somebody you'd prefer to see staying at, at Everton on a, on a long term basis given the, the history that he's got with his club? Well, I think David's expressed his, his will to be a manager, hasn't he? So I'm not so sure my opinion makes any difference whether he should or shouldn't stay because I haven't been here long enough. I think that's a board decision. And David's decision in his own right, if he feels that he needs to take the opportunity to be a manager, then there's a lot of uh, people that have worked with me that had that same desire and, and have gone on to be managers and gone on to be good managers. But... You know he's got a great position at the club at the moment, and that's a very difficult for him, decision for him to give up. Uh, I, I'm sure about that because Everton under 23 is a very privileged position, and uh, he's done very well in it. But if his desire is to be a manager, then he's some somewhere along the line he's going to have to take the plunge. Well, just finally, we saw um, Patrice Evra signing for West Ham a, a couple of days ago. Was he ever a player that you were? Interested in in the, in the last few weeks? If it was no, because we got we got Leighton Baines coming back very shortly, you know, and you know Leighton's, you know, similar experience to Patrice, and obviously Patrice is a little bit older, so you know Leighton will be back very shortly. Like I mean, so I didn't think that would be necessary at this at this stage of the season. We tried to sign a left back um, throughout the whole of the, the January window, but were unable to do so. Thank you very much, Sam. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again.